All right, so we made it to the last video in this section dealing with circles. What we'll be doing in this video is putting together a lot of the information we learned in previous sections. So as a reminder, in the first video, we derived our distance equation, which we used in our second video to come up with the standard form of the equation of the circle. In the third video, we learned an algebraic technique called completing the square, which didn't appear to have any relevance to anything we had learned in the previous two. But whatever, it was short enough, maybe you let it slide. And that brings us here to our fourth video, where the stated goal sounds really easy. It's kind of the opposite of what we did in the second video. In the second video, I started you out with the graph of a circle. You identified the center and the radius, and you used that to come up with the equation of the circle. In this video, we're just going in reverse. I'm going to start you out with the equation. I'm going to ask you to draw the circle. Uh, that sounds really easy. As long as I remember where all the pieces go in my standard form, I can look at it and just visually figure out where the center is and what the radius is. And yeah, there's a couple little sticking points. I have to make sure to get the signs correct on the coordinates of the center and make sure to report the radius and not the radius squared. But those were all the issues for the second video. I kind of feel like I'm missing something. How can you make this harder? And what's any of it have to do with the third video and completing the square? Well, think about it like this. If I have an equation, I can mess with it. The order that I add terms doesn't matter, so I could switch around my two parentheses. And if I felt like subtracting 16 from both sides of the equation, sure, I could do that. And you're like, yeah, but I can reverse all those things you're doing and get it into the standard form, which will still make it easy for me to draw the circle. Aha, but here's the trick. What if I expanded the binomials in the parentheses? And to kind of cover my tracks and make things even worse, what if I then combined like terms? The goal for this video is for me to give you an equation that kind of sort of looks like this, and for you to draw the graph of the circle that corresponds. That's going to be a little bit tricky. But the good news is, I think we have all the tools necessary to get there. Think about it like this. If we could just get back up to this top line, from there we can stare at the equation and figure out the center and radius fairly easily. How are we going to get there? Let me draw your attention to a couple terms in particular. And then, let me remind you of what we learned in the previous video. You see any connections? Do you see how the green parentheses kind of look like the left-hand side of our completed square? And the terms in blue kind of look like the right-hand side of our puzzle? Hmm, maybe we should solve this puzzle without thinking too deeply about why we're doing it. Let's see, the number in purple is negative 10. The number in red would be negative 5 if I were to write it, but I'm not gonna. I'm instead gonna figure out that negative 5 squared gives me positive 25 and fill in the yellow blank. Now that I have the yellow blank done, I'm gonna go back and fill in the red blank. The number in red is always half of the number in purple. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. I'm done with my puzzle. But what does this tell you? Well, think about what equality means. It's saying that x minus 5 squared is the exact same as x squared minus 10x plus 25. So if I'm lucky enough to have x squared minus 10x plus 25 somewhere in my equation, I can change that to x minus 5 squared, because those two things are equal. I see the x squared and the minus 10x, but I don't see a 25. But don't worry about it, you got an equation. You can always add or subtract numbers to both sides of the equation. So let's just add 25 to both sides. Now on the left, I have x squared minus 10x plus 25, which my puzzle told me was the exact same as x minus 5 squared, so I can replace the x squared minus 10x plus 25 with x minus 5 squared. Why would you do such a thing? Well, maybe right now you should focus more on how instead of why, but the short answer for why is because rewriting these terms as something squared gets it one step closer to being into our standard form. And maybe we can do the same thing with the y's without even looking at the puzzle. We've got y squared plus 2y. Ignore everything else. The number in purple would be the positive 2. I want to first figure out the number in yellow. Remember, to go from purple to yellow is kind of weird. First, we cut the 2 in half, and then we square that number. 1 squared just happens to be 1 to figure out the yellow number. So I have y squared plus 2y. I wish I had y squared plus 2y plus 1. No problem. I got an equation. Just add 1 to both sides. Now I look at my y squared plus 2y plus 1 and recognize that it's equal to y plus 1 squared. That plus 1 being the red number in the puzzle had we written it out. And I'm getting really close to an equation written in the standard form of a circle. In fact, all I have to do is subtract 10 from both sides, and I'm done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got totally lost. That was by far the hardest thing we've done so far. Yeah, that's probably true. But it's not as bad if you watch all the steps without hearing all the explanation. So let me run through one more example without trying to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. The first thing we want to do is group together the terms with an x in them and the terms with a y in them. As for the constant term, it doesn't really matter. I usually move it to the other side of the equation. Now view it like you have two separate puzzles. The purple number in the first puzzle is negative 6. So the red number, which we don't write, is negative 3. And the yellow number is positive 9. 
I got x squared minus 6x. I sure wish I had x squared minus 6x plus 9, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides of the equation. Same idea with the y's, except now the purple number is positive 8. So the red number is positive 4, and the yellow number is positive 16. I got y squared plus 8y. I sure wish I had y squared plus 8y plus 16, so I'm going to add 16 to both sides of the equation. I now have a perfect square with the x's and a perfect square with the y's. So recognizing that my red numbers would have been negative 3 and positive 4 respectively, I can change x squared minus 6x plus 9 into x minus 3 squared, and y squared plus 8y plus 16 into y plus 4 squared. My equation's now written in the standard form of a circle, so all that's left is for me to stare at it and analyze. The negative 3 in the parentheses with the x tells me that the x-coordinate of the center is positive 3. The positive 4 in the parentheses with the y tells me that the y-coordinate of the center is negative 4. And I see that 4 over on the other side of the equation, so the square of the radius is 4, so the radius must be equal to 2. My circle's centered at 3, negative 4, and the radius is 2. With that information, I can draw the circle.